last link. The finish line for fixing the Pacific Highway is inching closer. Planners say work on a new section between Ballina and Wilgulga could soon be underway. But sign-off is needed from the federal government, which must protect a koala habitat near the town of Wardell. Tonight, 7.30 talks to a leading ecologist who believes the koalas face local extinction and warns the potential loss of this threatened population could have far-reaching impacts. This animal will probably become endangered because it's currently listed as vulnerable. It will probably become endangered before we can turn this decline around. Australia's cuddliest marsupial and cultural icon is under threat, from vehicle collision to habitat destruction and feral animal attack. Here at Maria Mathis property near Ballina, these koalas are safe for now. Found seven so far. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, so you've been good. okay? Yeah. Great. That's good. Yeah. Well, lead on. Right. Well, one right above your head. But these conservationists, who keep an eagle eye on koala numbers, are worried about a new threat. The building of a new highway by roads and maritime just a few kilometres away. The route that they have preferred all along, they have been told, will impact on this koala population. This is a big issue. It's probably one of the most important ones I think I've come across in my career. And that's a, a long career? Yeah, it's a long career. I've been... Um, i fortunate enough to sort of work with koalas for nearly 40 years now. The stretch is the last link in the upgrade of the Pacific Highway, a project driven to improve safety for motorists. But the good news for drivers could come at a massive environmental cost. The modelling that we've done, and we've used international standards for modelling, has indicated this population will probably proceed to localised extinction by 2035. And when he says, I wipe out the population, I, look, I, he's an expert, but I, I've got other views that suggest not necessarily. Now, because what happens is koalas die for other reasons as well. Today, Dr Phillips and his team are carrying out more koala monitoring. Do you want the compasses on? Yeah, I don't mind. I'll take the compass. He's been studying colonies right up and down the east coast for 20 years. But it was during these field surveys for Ballina Council that he made a fascinating discovery. All of a sudden it was very clear that we had an ancestral source population. They'd been occupying this habitat for over 100 years, 110 years or more that we knew about. Um, and all of a sudden it was very clear that they were probably one of the most significant populations that, that certainly I'd had the, the luxury of working with over my career. Dr Phillips believes the planned highway will cut through key koala habitat, eventually wiping out this population. So Steve, we're right on the route here of the proposed highway. Yeah, this area just off to our east is an area of swamp sclerophyll forest. It supports the swamp mahogany trees and the forest red gums that um, we just filmed those animals in recently. And it's probably one of the most, or the more, you know, higher carrying capacity habitat types that we have on the north coast. So it's real koala country here, is it? Yeah, this is real koala country, and uh, its carrying capacity is very high. But conservationists say there is another way. Yep. All we're suggesting, I think what we've suggested very sensibly, is that the best option, and probably the cheapest option, is just to move the half highway alignment to the east of Wardell. While the RMS is pushing ahead with the western route, environmentalists say a more easterly route utilising most of the existing highway would be shorter and wouldn't impact on the koala. We did look at routes to the east. We did look at routes to the west. We looked at other routes from there. And after we looked at all those things, we came to the conclusion is this is the best location for the new highway. There's a whole heap of cane farmers. They're, they're actually, there's a viable cane industry on the eastern side of the river and they're, they're good quality cane land. So there's a question here, there's, a, there's an impact upon them. Bob Higgins is responsible for the highway upgrade project. We need to understand the underlying soft soils that are under it. He's been involved in highway route selection for 20 years. It's not the perfect route, we understand that, but it's the best route when you look at not only the environmental issues, 
but you've got to look at the uh, impact upon other farming land, you've got to look at the impact upon the community. Communities like Wardell, population 621, where the planned highway will eventually bypass. With the improvement in the highway between Brisbane and the uh, Byron Bay, there's so much more traffic comes through here. Ever since the uh, highway has been there, there's been accidents. Uh, and just recently there's been a fatality, two fatalities last weekend. The majority of Wardell people are in favour of looking after the koalas, but we believe that there's been, uh, the RMS has done so much investigation and will look after the koalas 100%. RMS measures to mitigate the impact on the koala includes fencing the 16 kilometre stretch as well as increased fauna crossings and the planting of more koala trees. So we're going to do everything we can to make sure that we can move these koalas safely from one side of the highway to the other. That means we'll fully fence the whole corridor right through there. Obviously we need to provide openings. Um, we're also building overpasses early so that we can get them established. And there's no amount of underpasses, there's no amount of fencing um, that is going to compensate this population for the loss of its habitat or the displacement of the animals who are going to lose their homes. It's one thing to fence an underpassing area, but at the intersections where there's no protection, animals get funneled onto the highway, bang, 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 bang. So you end up, because you haven't done it properly, you end up just transferring your impact elsewhere. So who have we got here, Kate? This is Desley, uh, eight-year-old female. Here at Lismore's Koala Care Centre, they see firsthand the impact habitat loss, disease and the roads are having. From March to May of this year, 51 koalas brought into the centre were either dead or dying. 11 had been hit by cars. Today, Sweetie, a resident koala, is being given her daily feed. She's been in care since she was found wandering a busy stretch of road near Byron Bay. Her mother was nowhere to be seen. Chronic disease has prevented her from being released back into the wild. We have about 270 koalas that come into care and there's probably... So she's put on weight. Over a half of that that are reported dead or come in and die at the care centre. So that's a year. Yeah. Broke your heart. That's broke my heart. Because these are um, listed as an Aussie icon. In the meantime, a decision on the highway route rests with the federal government. Those fighting to protect this threatened species can only watch and wait. For Dr Phillips, whose life work has been to study these koalas, he says they're not being given the consideration they deserve. What you tend to do after a while is you step back and you say, nothing's working. Um, here we are, we're giving you some of the best information that science can give you, and still you're saying, it's OK. And the reality is, it's not OK. You always ask yourself, who screams the loudest, you know, and what I've found in my experience is that, you know, koalas don't scream, the bush never screams. And so, all of our highway upgrades have a history of going through the bush because that's where the least noise comes from. Liz Casman with that report. Each week, dozens of